Welcome back to P4. Today we're looking at partial fractions. This is unit 2.1. So a single fraction with two or more distinct linear factors in the denominator can be split into those two or more separate fractions. And this splitting is called partial fractions. Later on in P4, we'll be able to use partial fractions to enable us to integrate um, other fractions. Now, easiest way to explain this is with a couple of examples. So let's have a look. So here's our example. Express our fraction as partial fractions. Now you can see it's clearly already has two distinct linear factors 2x plus 1 x minus 3 and that's how we're going to split it up so my first step is to write my original fraction out and then i make this equal to a over 2x plus 1 plus b over x minus 3 and really it shouldn't be an equals it should be an equivalent of three lines because it's essentially it's an identity the left side and the right side they are identical now what I need to do with the right hand side is I need to make this a single fraction now I'd normally take less steps to do this but I'm going to do it in more steps to hopefully make it obvious to everyone and later I'll take some shortcuts so my first step I have my fraction of a over 2x plus 1 and I'm going to times top and bottom by x minus 3 and then I have b over x minus 3 and I'm going to times top and bottom by 2x plus 1 so that means my fractions are staying the same equivalent but now you can see that the bottom is the same on both of them that means I can then combine these fractions And they are both over 2x plus 1, x minus 3. Now you can see that the bottom values are the same. That means that the top values must also be the same. So I can go ahead and write now that 2x minus 13 is equivalent to a x minus 3 plus b 2x plus 1. Now what I want to do is I want to find A and I want to find B. And to do that, I need to get rid of one of them. So let's look at the first one. If I let X equal 3, this bracket will be 0. So that's a great place to start. So let X equal 3. What I get then on the left is 2 lots of 3 minus 13. On the right, I get 3 minus 3 in the first bracket, and 2 lots of 3 plus 1 in my second bracket. So we've got 6 minus 13, and we've got 0a, and then we've got b, and then we've got 7. So 6 minus 13 is negative 7, equals 7b, so b is negative 1. Now, how can I make this bracket zero? Well, I need to make x a half, which will make this one. I need to be minus a half to get, be able to cancel out. Okay, so think about how you make this bracket zero. You know, you can think of it like this. I'm trying to make two x plus one equals zero. So I'm looking at x equals negative a half. That's what I want to substitute in. So I want let x equal minus a half. And that is what I'm substituting into both sides. So two lots of minus a half minus 13 equals a minus a half minus three plus b and it's two minus a half plus one. The b part, that's obviously gonna cancel out and give me zero. So looking at the left hand side, 2 times minus a half is minus 1, minus 13. 
and a half minus three is minus three and a half or seven over two. So minus seven over two A. So we've got minus 14 equals minus seven over two A. I want to divide by minus seven and multiply by two. And that will give me that A is equal to four. So now I've got my values of A and B. So let's look at what we wrote down near the beginning. We wrote down that our fraction was equivalent to A over this and B over this. Now we've said that A was 4 and B was negative 1. So now we can clearly state that when I split this fraction up, so I'll just write down quickly, it's the same as 4 over 2x plus 1 minus 1 over x minus 3. So these are equivalent. And later on, as I said in P4, if we come to integrate something like this, it's not so easy, but as a partial fraction, this is dead easy to integrate. And that's one of its biggest uses. Okay, second example. If I've got an example like this where the bottom isn't factorized, that's where I want to start. So I want to factorize that bottom. So let's write at the top. 6x squared plus 7x minus 3. Factories at the bottom. Let's have a look. I'll do this over the side just here. But we've got x would come out leaving me x squared minus 1. And this is the difference of two squares, isn't it? And that I can split up again. So this is x, x minus 1, and x plus 1. So that's what I've got on the bottom. x x minus 1 and then x plus 1. What that means is I've actually got three factors. So this time I've got a over x plus b over x minus 1 plus c over x plus 1. Now a few of you might be wondering does it matter which is a over which is b over which is c over and it does not. Okay you'll it'll always work itself out to be the right value above the right factor so the next step i like to jump to in one go so i have this and i know that a now has to be multiplied by both x minus one and x plus one i know that b needs to multiply by x and x plus one and I know C needs to be multiplied by X and X minus 1. So what I'm doing is I'm just jumping straight into what would be my top line. Now I can see that if I substitute 1 in, for example, I'll get rid of this one and this one I'll find B. If I substitute negative 1 in, I'll get rid of this one, I'll get rid of this one and find C. So that's a couple of places for me to start x equals 1. So that would give us 6 lots of 1 squared plus 7 lots of 1 minus 3. And when I substitute 1 in, this is going to become 0, so this will go. And this will become 0, so this will go. So I'm actually just left with b times 1 times 2. And that just makes my life a little bit easier. So on the left side, I've got 7 plus 6 minus 3. So that's going to give me 10. And 2b on the right. So b is equal to 5. Next, I want to substitute in negative 1. So substituting in negative 1 on the left, I get 6 times negative 1 squared. Plus 7 lots of negative 1 minus 3. Now, negative 1 is going to make this bracket 0, so A is going to go. And this bracket 0, so B is going to go. So that's going to give me C times negative 1 times negative 1 minus 1. So on the left, I've got 6, take away 7, take away 3. And that will give me minus 4. And then on the right, I've got minus 1 multiplied by minus 2 
So it's going to give me 2c. Therefore, c is negative 2. And there's my second letter. And finally, I'm going to substitute x equals 0 in. As this will get rid of the b, it'll get rid of the c, and it will give me the a. So 6 times 0 squared plus 7 times 0 minus 3. Um, obviously, I didn't really need to write that bit down. I could have just gone straight in with that minus 3. And then I've got a, and then in my brackets, I've got minus 1 and a plus 1, as x is 0. And then b will disappear and c will disappear. So we've got just the minus a on the right. That means that a must equal 3. And now that we've found all three, we can finish the question off. And you should always finish the question off by fully writing it out again and substituting in your values for a, b and c, just like I'm doing here. So 3 over x plus 5 over x minus 1 minus 2 over x plus 1. So don't just leave it like this. Write it fully back out.